This is a tremendously significant and sacred occasion for members of the church throughout the world. The First Presidency will please arise. It is proposed that we sustain Ezra Taft Benson as prophet, seer, and revelator, and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My brethren and sisters, I want you to know that I know that Christ is at the helm. This is his world. This is his church. His purposes will be accomplished. I know that. It's a long journey from Whitney, Idaho, to the cabinet room of the White House, and then to become the Lord's spokesman to the inhabitants of the earth. But such a journey has been Ezra Taft Benson's. In the pages of his journal and other personal accounts, one catches a glimpse of the path he has traveled from farm boy to prophet of God. That path began here, in the hills and valleys of southeast Idaho. May 23, 1912. Father and mother returned home from town today with the mail, and both were in tears. They brought us inside and told us Father had received a mission call. We will all need to shoulder the work of the farm. Through her tears, Mother said, we are so proud that Father is worthy to serve. Separation will be hard for her. In a matter of weeks, George Benson was 1,500 miles away. At night, Sarah would gather the seven children around the coal oil lamp in the kitchen and read letters from their missionary father. Ezra recalled, there came into our home a spirit of missionary work that never left it. In 1921, Ezra himself was called on a mission to Great Britain. September 13th. The prejudice in this area has been intense. But tonight, we addressed a large crowd at South Shields. I spoke with a freedom I had never experienced. Afterwards, I couldn't recall what I had said, but several non-members surrounded me and said, tonight, we received a witness that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God, and we are ready for baptism. It was the first experience of that kind I've had, where I knew the Lord was with me. In 1926, Ezra Taft Benson graduated with honors from Brigham Young University with a degree in animal husbandry. The student body voted him most popular man. When a certain young lady named Flora Amerson returned from her mission to the Hawaiian Islands, it seemed all was aligned for two unique lives to become one. September 10th, 1926. The wedding ceremony was too beautiful for words. Everything was so quiet and peaceful. It all made us so thankful for the restored gospel and all that it holds out to us. Surely we have never been happier. Loading all their belongings in the back of an old Model T Ford pickup, the couple drove to Ames, Iowa, where less than a year later, Ezra received a master's degree in agricultural economics from Iowa State University. Then it was back to the farm in Whitney, where Ezra reflected, we expected to spend the rest of our lives, but it was not to be. Before long, the model farm he operated attracted widespread attention, and he was offered the position of county agricultural agent for the University of Idaho. Spending scarcely 30 days at his desk the first year as county agent, he traversed the back roads of southeast Idaho, helping farmers solve their problems. Word of his effectiveness spread, and a promotion took him to the state capital in Boise. Here, he also served as first counselor in the Boise State Presidency, and then as state president. Eventually, national agricultural leaders became aware of this bright and energetic farm specialist from Idaho. In 1939, the National Council of Farmer Cooperatives in Washington, D.C. 
invited him to become their executive secretary, the organization's chief operating officer. After much prayer and consideration, the young family moved to Washington. June 30th, 1939. Spent all day in meetings with the USDA and at the Capitol, lobbying against a certain farm bill. The job appears almost too large for me, but I expect to give it the best I have. In 1940, the church's first stake in the East was organized in Washington, D.C., and Ezra Taft Benson became its president. Then, three years later, while visiting Salt Lake City, an event occurred which would forever change his life. July 26th, 1943. Was told that President Heber J. Grant wanted to meet with me. He was convalescing from a stroke in his summer home in Emigration Canyon. I was shown into his room where he was resting on the bed. I sat down next to him. He took my hand in both of his and said, Brother Benson, with all my heart, I congratulate you and pray God's blessings to attend you. You have been chosen as the youngest member of the Council of the Twelve Apostles. For several minutes, I could only say, Oh, President Grant, that can't be. He held my hand for a long time as we both shed tears. When I was able to state that I loved the church, he said, We know that. And the Lord wants men who will give everything for his work. It would not be long before he would be called upon to do exactly that. January 29th, 1946. I am leaving today for London for the purpose of reopening missionary work in the war-torn countries of Europe. This is a challenging opportunity for which I am deeply grateful. During the next 11 months, he traveled over 61,000 often hazardous miles in everything from unheated aircraft to military jeeps. He searched out and met with the starving saints of Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and the rest of occupied Europe. February 13th, drove through once beautiful Berlin the wreckage cannot possibly be understood unless seen. Later, I faced in a half-wrecked auditorium 480 cold, half-starved, but faithful Latter-day Saints. It was an inspiration to see the light of their faith. Elder Benson oversaw the distribution of 92 boxcars of food, clothing, and bedding to thousands of war-weary saints. He authorized the printing of 5,000 copies of the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price in German. He organized branches, purchased properties, and rejuvenated missionary work. When he left 11 months later, the saints throughout Europe had a renewed spirit of hope. But challenging missions of service were only beginning for this dedicated disciple of Christ. <laughs> 